Hey, thanks for joining me today, Thursday, April 22nd. This is an interesting story today from the Washington Post, but first, flame on. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, all that good stuff. If you do all of them, or just one of them, I appreciate it. It does help this channel. There was an op-ed, an opinion piece, written in Friday's Washington Post that I wanted to talk to you about because I find it fascinating how this was presented. Let's go to the article. It's wrong to pull troops out of Afghanistan, but we can minimize the damage. The forever war isn't really over. It's entering a new phase. There's a picture of old President Biden there. And this is written by Megan O'Sullivan and Richard Haas. And uh, right off the bat, I found the style of the writing interesting. Uh, almost reminded me of how we did it in, in high school. You know, the, the first aim, and then you go on to say something. And the second goal, because you don't want to use the same word before. You used aim, and now you use goal. The second goal. And then we go down, it's a third goal. So it's not the third goal because you used the second goal. So you got to switch that up. A third goal of U.S. policy is this. And then we get to a fourth prong. So they went all out in their use of the thesaurus. And a fifth objective. So it's not a goal, it's an objective. It's a really... <laughs> and then finally, and then they wrap it up. But let's see who these authors are. Uh, Richard Haas, okay, Council Foreign Relations. We kind of know what he's doing. And Megan O'Sullivan is a professor at the Harvard Kennedy School and the North American Chair of the Trilateral Commission. Okay, she was Deputy ne National Secretary Advisor for Iraq and Afghanistan from 2006 to 2007. Now, I think it's always important to really find out who these people are. If we're going to take their opinion, we should know what their interests are. So, if I just go over here to her Twitter page, here she is. Uh, nice looking, lots of filters, Photoshop, some airbrushing, but she looks great. Got the blue check mark, professor at Harvard author, security advisor, okay. So here she tweeted about the story. I was saddened and disconcerted by the decision to withdraw the remaining small number of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. In this piece, Richard Haas and I focus mainly on six things that the U.S. can do to mitigate the downsides of this worrying decision. And um, let's look here at the... Second reply, someone says, shocked. There's a picture. She's on the board of directors. So what, I wonder what board of directors she's on. Raytheon. She's a member of the board of directors for Raytheon. Is that the largest military company in the world? Do they produce more weapons than anyone else? I don't know, does any, is there a bigger weapons company than Raytheon? It's interesting that that was not listed in her Twitter bio, which we can all choose what we put in our Twitter bio. Interesting that that was not listed in the Washington Post that's letting me know and letting the reader know who this person is. It reminds me of something called a conflict of interest. Now, I just pulled it up so you don't have to look it up. If that's a situation in which a person is in a position to derive personal benefit from actions or decisions made in their official capacity. And do you think Megan O'Sullivan is going to get some personal gain from pushing this uh, opinion? So, uh, M. Ziacco says, uh, I get why you didn't mention being on the Raytheon board in your Washington Post piece. And in fact, that you personally profit by the involvement in Afghanistan. You're awful. 
But Post Opinions, that's the Washington Post Opinion page, is beyond remiss to have ever published this. I agree with that. Uh, Jamie asks, uh, how does it feel to be the physical manifestation of greed and evil? She didn't get a reply. Responsible statecraft. Margaret O'Sullivan, who served as Deputy National Security Advisor for Iraq and Afghanistan from 2005 to 2007, also serves on the board of Raytheon, which has a $145 million contract to train Afghan Air Force pilots. She received $940,000 in cash and stock from the defense contractor between 2017 and 2019. Hmm. That seems like important information. Uh, Deren says, Oops, it slipped my mind. Forgot to mention. Pretty shameless. Rob uh, calls her a little worm. I don't know if she's a worm. Nate says, You're a ghoul, a warmonger, a callous witch who only cares about enriching yourself and others at Raytheon. I know the military-industrial complex will leave kicking and screaming, but they will leave. You're only saddened that grandchildren of men who died two decades ago won't die there in the future. Ayana says, uh, I say psychopaths and sadists like you find another way of making a living because, my God, what a dark source of income. Uh, Jay says, you're sad that you'll no longer profit from the death and destruction in Afghanistan with a link to her Raytheon page. War profiteer with a neoliberal patina. Sleepy worker says, you make money off of dead troops and dead Afghans. Bad faith actor number 69420, good number. I'm sure you and the ghouls at Raytheon would find other places to feed your bloodthirst. Now, why is this especially troubling when the newspaper is the Washington Post? The Washington Post, owned by Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Amazon that has the large military contract with the CIA. The same Amazon that does all the web services for the CIA. Do you see the problem? Meet America's newest military giant, Amazon. Pentagon's controversial $10 billion Jedi cloud computing deal is one of the most lucrative defense contractors contracts ever. And again, in the Washington Post piece, it's not even mentioned she's on the board of Raytheon. Now, anyone can have an opinion piece in the Washington Post. Well, you've got to be connected. They wouldn't post something from me. But potentially anyone could have their opinion piece in the Washington Post. But it is important to tell the readers who they are. If you're reading them and you think, oh, she's a professor at Harvard. Well, she looks smart, so I guess I'll listen to what she says. If the paper does not put in important details as to where she gets her income, such as from being on the member, <laughs> a member of the board of Raytheon, that paper is doing propaganda. And in this case, Washington Post does all the computing for the CIA. This is state-sponsored propaganda in the Washington Post. I ask you, how can you trust anything the Washington Post Posts. That's what I'd like to know. I think the entire newspaper is suspect and they should be read at your peril. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Be sure to smash that like button. Have an awesome day. Peace.